In this video, we're going to give an overview of the Taylor and McLaren series for a function, uh, which are tools uh, that we'll use to find power series representations for certain types of functions. Let's start by considering a function f of x, which we know has a power series representation at some number x equal to a. Uh, we can write that power series representation in the following form, uh, that f of x is equal to c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x minus a plus c sub 2 times x minus a squared plus c sub 3 times x minus a cubed uh, and so on. And we could continue that pattern for as many terms as we would like, um, but for each value of n, we will have a coefficient c sub n multiplied by x minus a raised to the nth power. Um, for purposes of this video, we're going to um, ignore issues of convergence. Uh, that will be a focus later on. Uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on what this series should be if it exists. And so what that means is that we want to find the values of these coefficients, c0, c1, c2, c3, c4, so forth, um, in terms of our function f. And so that is our goal um, initially, is to find what these values, what these coefficients should be for our function f. So in order to find the value of c sub 0, our first coefficient, we're going to evaluate um, our function and power series representation at the value x equal to a. When we substitute a in for x, we see that f of a is going to equal c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times a minus a plus c sub 2 times a minus a squared plus c sub 3 a minus a cubed and so on. And of course, all of these expressions except the first one um, involve an expression of the form a minus a to some power which will always equal 0. And so this equation simplifies to just be f of a equals c sub 0. And so this gives us a formula for c sub 0. c sub 0 will always be the value of our function um, at the center of our power series representation, a. Now that we've found a formula for c sub 0, the next step is to find a formula for c sub 1. In order to do that, we're going to take our power series representation and our function f of x, and we're going to differentiate them. So we take our function f of x and differentiate it to form f prime of x. And then we know that we can find a power series for this derivative by differentiating the power series for f of x term by term. Um, so we start with the first term c sub 0. Uh, which is a constant and has a derivative of 0, so we can just omit that from our power series representation. The second term, c1 x minus a, um, we have the constant c1 uh, multiplied by the derivative of x minus a, which is 1, and so we're going to write that as 1 times c1. Um, now, of course, that is just equal to c1, but for purposes of, of identifying the formula that we're going to see um, throughout the next couple steps, it's actually helpful if we leave the multiplying by 1 in our formula. Our next term is c2 x minus a squared. Uh, when we differentiate that, um, we have the power rule that applies to the x minus a squared, uh, which will give us 2 times x minus a. And so um, this will give us 2 times c2 times x minus a to the first power. And our last term that we've shown here, although, of course, there's infinitely many terms after this, uh, we have to differentiate x minus a cubed, uh, which we can do again with the power rule. So we get 3 times c3 x minus a squared. Once we have this, we can evaluate this derivative at, at x equal a. So we're computing the value of f prime of a. Um, here we have 1 times c1. And the rest of these terms, notice, when we substitute in a, we're going to get an a minus a, which is equal to 0, just like we did when we substituted a into the power series representation for f. We had the first constant term that remained, and all other terms uh, vanished because we have a factor of 0. And that's going to happen here as well. And so here we have f prime of a, which is equal to 1 times c1, and so we could actually um, write this, again, in a kind of a weird way, but one that will be helpful later on. 
Um, we can rewrite this to see that C1 is going to equal F prime of A divided by 1. Now that we have a formula for C1, we're going to find, try to find a formula for C2. And to do this, we're going to just repeat this process. We're going to differentiate our um, function f prime of x to form f double prime, the second derivative. We're going to differentiate our power series representation for f prime to find a power series representation for f double prime. And then we're going to evaluate that uh, power series for the second derivative at x equal to a. So here are the details in finding um, the formula for C2. Uh, we differentiate our power series representation for f prime to get the power series representation for f double prime of x. Um, here, the first term, 1 times c1 is constant and differentiates to 0. Uh, the second, we have a constant or a coefficient of 2c2. We then differentiate x minus a, which is 1. So we get 1 times 2 times c2. And again, I'm leaving that as 1 times 2 um, for purposes of the formula that we'll develop in a moment. And our third term, we end up differentiating x minus a squared, which multiplies by 2. So we have 2 times 3, c3, times x minus a to the first power. And again, I'm leaving that as 2 times 3 intentionally uh, for purposes of the formula that we'll have. Once we have our power series for f double prime of x, we evaluate it at x equal to a. And all of the terms beyond the first one will vanish because we'll have a factor of a minus a in each of those. And so we're left with f double prime of a equaling 1 times 2 times c2. Um, and therefore, we can divide the second derivative of a by 1 times 2 to equal c2. And this will be our formula for c2. We're going to repeat this process one more time to find a formula for c3. And then we'll have four coefficients, c0, c1, c2, and c3. And we're going to look for a pattern among those four uh, to see if we can predict what will happen for all future coefficients. So term-by-term -term differentiation on um, applied to the second derivative will give us that the third derivative is 1 times 2 times 3 times c3, uh, plus all the remaining terms after that. Um, all of those will have a factor of x minus a. And so when we evaluate the third derivative at our value of a, all of those remaining terms will become 0. And so we're left with 1 times 2 times 3 times c3. Uh, dividing by 1 times 2 times 3 gives us the formula for c3 to be f, uh, th f triple prime of a divided by 1 times 2 times 3. Here we are compiling all of the formulas that we discovered previously in this video by differentiating the power series uh, for f of x and evaluating at x equal to a. What we would like to do is use these formula uh, to find a formula for c sub n, the coefficient of um, x minus a to the n in our power series representation. Um, when we look at our four formula, we'll notice that um, all of them have the form of a fraction. Um, of course, c sub 0 is not written directly as a fraction, but we could, of course, always write a number over 1 to make it into a fraction. So we're going to do that here. And for our formula, we're going to look at the numerator and denominator separately. For the numerator, we notice that for c1, we have the first derivative of f. For c2, we have the second derivative. And for c3, we have the third derivative. And so it stands to reason that if we want to find a formula for c sub n, uh, the numerator should be the nth derivative of f, all evaluated at a. Um, and so, for example, if we wanted to find the formula for c sub 8, um, we would find the 8th derivative of f and then evaluate at the, the number a. That will be our numerator for our fraction. Um, notice that in c sub 0, um, we might consider the 0th derivative of f to equal f. Um, the, number, the order of the derivative simply tells us how many times we differentiate our function. So the second derivative means we differentiate it twice. And so um, it's logical with that way of thinking that f might be thought of as the zeroth derivative. If we take f and we differentiate zero times, then we'll have f. And so this formula then applies to c0 as well. Now to look at the denominators, um, this is a little bit more difficult um, to discover. However, by keeping the denominators as products instead of multiplying them out, 
um, gives us a little bit more insight into what they might be. Um, for example, uh, for C3, we have the denominator of 1 times 2 times 3. And so that's all the numbers between 1 and 3 multiplied together, which we know is an, um, a longhand way of writing 3 factorial. We also have 1 times 2 here, which is a longhand way of writing 2 factorial. Um, for C1, we have 1, which is simply 1 factorial. And as you'll recall by a convention, 0 factorial is also equal to 1. And so the denominators uh, for these four coefficients turn out to be the subscript factorial. And so for C sub n, we would want the number, the denominator there, to be n factorial. So this gives us a formula that will help us find any coefficient we want in our power series representation for f. If I want the coefficient C sub n, I have to find the nth derivative of f, evaluate it at a, and then divide by n factorial. Given a function f, the power series with coefficients c sub n that we just defined um, is very important and is given a particular name. Uh, we call such a series the Taylor series of f at the value of a. Um, it's given in the standard uh, power series form. Um, it's just that the coefficients c sub n here are specific uh, numbers given by the nth derivative and n factorial. So we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity, of the nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial, all multiplied by x minus a to the nth power. Um, and so written out in some terms, we see that this is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared plus f triple prime of a over 3 factorial times x minus a cubed and so on and so forth. Notice that in order for this definition to make sense, we do need to start with a function f which has derivatives of all orders at the value of a, which means we need to be able to evaluate the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on derivatives. Um, if that is not the case, if we cannot find derivatives um, of a certain order at this particular value of a, then there is no Taylor series. A special case of the Taylor series occurs when the value of a is zero. Um, and we give this particular Taylor series a specific name called a Maclaren series. So a Maclaren series is nothing more than a Taylor series for our function f at x equal to zero.